I've been waiting to pull the trigger on a pair of engineer boots for a long time. Now, to be fair, I do have some engineer boots, but these are really more boots that I wear specifically for riding the motorcycle. They're tall, they're chunky, they're basically a work boot that uh, is, it serves a purpose. The same way I wear my motorcycle jacket, only on the motorcycle, these are really meant to protect and serve that purpose. The thing is, is that engineer boots are pretty rare. I mean, I could probably count on both hands the different companies that offer decent engineer boots. And you do have some big hitters in there like Red Wing and Westco who offer some really nice ones, but they're just, they're harder to get the proportions right on. A lot of times you see them and look more like a work boot like the one I just showed you. That's from NYX, by the way. And then sometimes you get ones which just have a really bulbous toe and they look more almost like they're trying to be historic, accurate workwear, which is cool if that's your bag. But then you get some that are almost a little bit too slim and they look like they're a Chelsea boot just dressed up a little bit more like a, like a Chelsea boot on steroids. I think it's hard to get all those proportions right, but John Lofgren does it, in my opinion, better than anybody else and he got them oh so right. A toe box that balances sleek and roomy with no big old bump in the toe, a buckle that's not too long or too big, and a shaft that fits nicely under most trim cut jeans. More than that though, all of these elements work in harmony together to create what is, arguably, the best engineer boot design available today, anywhere, for any money. As if that wasn't enough, this is a John Lofgren Standard & Strange collaboration using none other than Dark Cherry Horsehide from Shinky. This leather has gained almost a mythical reputation, and it's considered by some to be among the finest in the world. It's horse butt with the shells still in it, so it's very rare and very expensive. And even the interior is lined with horse hide. It's also very hard to get and even harder to work with, so I'm told. In fact, they only ended up making about 40% of the boots that were pre-ordered from Standard & Strange due to issues with this leather. So Horse hide's a lot different than bovine leather, where horse hide can have natural scars and marks because it's an animal that lives outside. And, you know, you're going to get some of those natural variations. Some people really like that, but a lot of the American audience doesn't. So they only offered about 40%, even from people who bought them beforehand. So they're even more limited. And I'm sure that a lot of those people were very disappointed when they weren't able to get their boots. But in an effort to dig a little bit deeper, I actually reached out to John Lofgren himself, who told me a few of the details about this particular collaboration. And he told me that all the stitching on these boots is done by an elderly gentleman who works from home, sitting on a tatami mat, operating a single needle machine. It's pretty cool. I mean, the shafts are all stitched by hand with an emphasis on absolute precision. And as you can see, they, they hit that mark. These use Japanese steel shanks, a 270 degree British Goodyear storm welt, brass hardware, and a gorgeous woodsman heel. The sole is made by Vibram, and from what I understand, John Lofgren only uses the USA made Vibram soles. The Vibram 705 is the one that's on this boot, and the heel is a Vibram 700. Now when these boots finally arrived, I did the same thing most people would do, especially when you're told that 60% of you aren't going to receive your boots. I opened them up looked at them, smelled the leather, looked at every little section of it, just drooled over the precision and the perfection of the way that these are made, looked at the natural variations in the grain and the horse hide. They were even better than I had expected them to be. So then the time came to try them on. And to say that they didn't fit would be a tremendous understatement. I couldn't get my, my foot down into the footbed. Just couldn't do it. I was... I must have spent half an hour just trying to get it down there. I, I mean, I was standing up, sitting down, trying all kinds of different things, trying different thinness socks, um, figuring out what I could do to try to make my foot get into these damn things. The sizing was supposed to be very similar to that of an Iron Ranger, so I ordered my Iron Ranger size. They're supposed to fit, but the thing is with John Lofgren boots, in order to get that shape and that silhouette and that very sexy design, there's no other way to put it, the boot shaft is a little bit narrower, which is why they're not so clunky and chunky. Thing is though, I have a high instep and that's the top part of your foot that goes down, which means that I have a pretty meaty foot and trying to get my foot down into that thing, it just wasn't happening. So after about half an hour, I finally accepted defeat and wrote an email to the folks from Standard & Strange saying, I, I have to ask what your return policy is on such a limited edition item and, and one that was only offered in even more limited quantities. 
So, luckily, within a few minutes, I got a response back from Standard and Strange saying, all right, try this. Get a long shoehorn. Put grocery bags over your feet to help them slide down because the interior of these, while it is horsehide, it has a certain grip to it. It's not a type of leather that is very slick, so it will get that after a while, but especially in the beginning, it's almost more like a new buck, if I could be so bold. So put on some something that's really slippery, grocery bags. Try using those two things to get your foot in. And after a little bit of struggling, it worked. I'm sitting there in my new John Lofgren's feeling like a million bucks with grocery bags on my feet looking like a complete dope, but I finally got them on. So it's difficult. And especially because it is horse hide, it doesn't stretch the way that cowhide will. Cowhide has a certain amount of stretch to it. And anybody who's worn a you know horse hide jacket versus a cowhide hide jacket knows that there's a certain amount of stretch that you get. And horse hide, while it's tough and all that stuff, um, it doesn't tend to stretch the same way. It will break in over time, but you really do have to put in the, the time and the hours to break it in. So I got them on. I walked around, took them off, which was also pretty difficult. The next time, it was a little bit easier. It was a little bit easier as time went on and I found places to wear these. It would get better putting my foot down into these things. So the problem with these boots in particular is that they are not work boots. So I had to make sure that I could wear them for an extended amount of time in order to sort of justify the uh, the difficulty of putting them on and taking them off. So I knew I was going to go off for a while, do a fair amount of walking to break them in and not have to worry about getting into anything that's too dirty. I mean, they are boots after all. And you know, I, I treat my boots like boots should be treated, but I'm not going to wear these welding out in the garage. It's just not going to happen. Not for a pair of $1,200, had to wait a long time, very, very rare and exotic leather boots. It's just not going to happen. That's just stupid. I put them on a couple of times. And, and one of the times that was most recent, I put them on to do a uh, film shoot in New York City. Wore them all day, walked around, no problems at all. Once my foot's in there, they are very comfortable, nice and supportive. And once you get used to having the feel of a laceless boot on, which is a little bit different. I mean, it really is. Um, it's just wonderful. There's no issue with my heel swimming around. From what I've heard, there's a lot of issues with a lot of engineer boots with heel lift because you don't really have a way to really sink your foot down into that heel cup like you do with laces. The fit on these for me is excellent. Now, this is tricky because the fit for everybody is going to be a little bit different. Unless you have the exact same feet as me, this really won't mean a whole lot. But the fit is good. I haven't noticed any heel lift. There's a big issue with engineer boots where sometimes because you don't have the ability to cinch down some laces, that your heel will swim around just a little bit. And that can create blisters and all kinds of things. So I haven't had any of that. I walked around without a problem. And you know, the ability to adjust the buckles does make a difference. The one thing that I did notice is since they're a little bit taller up on the calf, when you pull your socks all the way up, if your socks tend to go down at all, um, you can sometimes have the edges of that leather rubbing against your calf. Wearing a pair of engineer boots is very different than wearing a pair of six inch boots at all. These boots are gorgeous. There's no way that anybody could argue any differently. I mean, I just think that the precision of the stitching, the overall finishing, the leather, the design, everything about it is perfect. Absolutely perfect. There's not a stitch out of place on these. Everything is done to just such a high degree of perfection. It's just mind boggling. They're gorgeous. But it did get me thinking, who would buy these boots besides somebody like me who kind of justifies some of my purchases because I know I'm going to make a video about them. So besides somebody like me, and there's really only a few, who would buy these? Why would you buy these? Because at the outset, you could say, well, $1,200 for a pair of boots, I could buy two pairs of whites and be very happy. I mean, they're, they're wonderfully made. They're beautiful, timeless, the whole nine. But here's the thing. When you buy boots at this level, it's like collecting art. You're getting a John Lofgren design. And for me, the thing was the, the, the leather was something that was exclusive. It was a collaboration with a shop that I love and great people. And it just made sense. But for you, should you get these if there's other things out there which are less expensive and maybe would serve you better? I mean, 1200 bucks for this pair because they were special, you know, leather and stuff. But I think you can get a regular Chrome Excel pair for somewhere around $1,000. You have to be willing to accept that you are buying these 
based on the exclusivity of the design, the uniqueness of that design. And to me, if you're going to buy something and there's somebody who does it better than anybody else, like John Lofgren, in my opinion, then it's a no brainer. I want the best example of that thing, not out of the world expensive. Don't charge me five grand for it because that's absolutely ridiculous. But when it's reasonable like this and you can see where that money goes to the level of precision and detail and finishing, uh, I think it's it's very similar to buying that classic high-end sports car that you had your, your eyes on because it has so many things that are so exclusive to that particular model. Now, to me, John Lofgren is, is again, as I mentioned, the best out there. I just think that the designs are gorgeous, beautiful, hard to beat, but maybe for you it's something else. Maybe there's another brand out there. Maybe there's another style. The whole reason for this video is to show you these and give you my rundown on them. But chances are you probably clicked on it because you already knew what you were getting into. You already knew about John Lofgren. Or maybe you saw the thumbnail and you said, those are some amazing looking boots and I have to get more information on them. To me, if you're gonna have a pair of engineer boots, do it right, get yourself a pair of John Lofgren's. I don't think that there's anybody out there with a better design. And there are more accessible versions in Chrome Excel and, and I think he has a couple of other leathers available. And you can go and check those out. I know Standard and Strange uh, carries them. I know you can get them at johnlofgren.com. I will leave links to both those places in the description below, but I just don't think that it gets any better than this. And if it does, I have yet to find it. So let me know what you think about John Lofgren. I think they're, this is my first pair of probably several of his products. Uh, I can, I have a feeling. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.